Today we will be solving this problem called Movie Festival 2. It is a continuation of the problem Movie Festival, so I recommend solving this one before moving on to the other problem. And I will put a link to the video editorial for that problem in the description box. So in a movie festival, N movies will be shown and a movie club consisting of K members who will be all attending the festival. You know the starting and ending time of each movie, what is the maximum total number of movies the club members can watch entirely if they act optimally. Here the first line of the input will contain two integers, n and k, both up to 2 times 10 to the 5th, and then will follow n movies, each represented by two integers a and b up to a billion. And the difference here between this problem and the previous one is that now we have k people. In the other problem we had only one person. So let's go to the drawing board and see how we could solve this problem. So first let's recall what we did with the easier version of this problem. And to illustrate that, let's have a thought experiment. So suppose you are at the supermarket and it is 7.55 and the supermarket closes at 8 and you want to go through the queue to pay for your groceries and you have this dilemma of picking which queue to choose but you can see that this customer has only one item while this one has five and this other one has six items so which queue will you choose Evidently, you would answer this queue, but why did you choose this queue? You chose this queue probably because you saw that this customer had only one item, but that's not meaningful. What you interpreted from this is that this customer will be the first to finish. So if the supermarket wanna process one more customer before it closes, this customer better chooses the queue that will be free the earliest. So we would use the exact same greedy approach with our problem here. So we're gonna sort movies by finishing time so that we can pick the one that finishes the earliest and then we will process from there and that will become our initial state and we will follow the same strategy again. So. If these were my intervals, I would sort them by finishing time. So I would have 1 and 5 at the beginning, then 2 and 5. Then the next finishing time is 6. So I'm going to have 3, 6. Then 6, 9. And finally, 8, 10. And if there was only one person he would choose to pick this movie then he will move on to the next movie but the beginning time of this movie is earlier than the finishing time of the movie i picked so i'll not choose this one i can't choose this one either because it starts at time three but i can choose this one and now i will be done but by nine so i cannot pick this movie as well and the number of movies I was able to watch was two and I claim that we cannot do any better than that. Now how could we extend our approach to manage this case of multiple uh, persons here? Uh, and basically we will keep our same strategy, uh, we will just extend it to more people. So the way to do that is to start with the first person so the first person will pick this movie uh, because it is the right thing to do then the second person will come and pick this movie because it is the movie that will finish the earliest after this one and then when we come to this movie we'll see if any of our two guys will be able to watch this movie but both of them are not done yet because they want to be done until five so this movie won't be watched. Then moving on to this one, it starts at 6 and both of our guys will be able to watch it. So say green guy watches it. Then now finally we're gonna move to this movie and green guy cannot watch it but yellow guy will be able to watch it because he was done at 5. So this movie will also be watched by yellow guy and in total we watched 4 movies 
and that was the answer for the example here so how can we actually implement this so basically when we were at this position we asked ourselves is there a finishing time that is larger than three so if we had some finishing time say two here then the guy who finished at two can undertake this movie now so basically we need a data structure that we will ask it for some value and it will tell us if there is any value smaller than our value also we should be able to insert elements into our data structure and update them quickly because we have to do that n times so what comes to mind is to use a set for example so this is my set i will keep inserting my right boundaries as i go along and since i can have duplicates here i will keep a set of pair of ints so that i can make these values distinct by inserting them along with their indices so at the beginning my set is empty and i have to process this first movie since i still have two guys free i can assign this first movie to the first guy and i will mention here that this first guy will be busy until times five so i'm gonna insert five zero here now i will move on to this second movie and what would be optimal for me is to keep my second person free and have my first person watch this movie again so the way i would know that is to see if in my set there is some element who is smaller than two so this would mean that there is a person that is done and can undertake this movie but as we can see here we only have one element five and it is not smaller than two but how can we actually uh, get this information fast from our set so say we have other values say we had five six and three we would need to know if there is a value smaller than two but the operations we know how to perform on our set are things like lower bound and upper bound and these deal with the values that are larger than some value so we could ask for the upper bound of two and it would return three uh, and we could ask for the upper bound of seven and it would return the end of the set so that way we could check if there is an element that is larger than the value we want but that's not what we want what we actually want is to check for values that are actually smaller so the lower bound or upper bound does almost what we want but not quite so what we can do is change the comparator of the set and have it a set that sorts from larger to smaller instead and instead of doing that we can just adapt our strategy to this goal here and instead of inserting these values we could insert them times negative one so here we would insert negative five instead and now i'm gonna ask if there is a value larger than negative two when i insert it into my set and no if i check for the lower bound or the upper bound of negative two it's gonna give me the end of my set because there is no value that is larger than negative two and i would know that my first guy cannot watch this movie as well so the second optimal thing to do is to assign my second person to watch this movie and i will insert five one negative five one into my set and you could uh, notice here that my set will never grow larger than k because i can only afford to have k people here so i'll move on to this third interval and i'll ask if there are uh, values that are larger than negative three but when i perform the upper bound or the lower bound of negative three what i get is the end of the set again so this means that this set cannot be watched by any of the other guys so maybe i should assign some new guy to watch it but i can't because i already have my two guys busy so we will not be able to watch this movie and that way i would increment my count of bad movies by one 
and next I'm gonna move on to this position and now I'm gonna ask if there is some interval that is larger than negative 6 and indeed both of these intervals are larger than negative 6 so I can pick any of them erase it from my set and insert negative 9 2 instead so this means that the first guy will be visiting 9 now and finally for my last movie it starts at 8 so I'm gonna check if there is a movie that uh, or if there is an entry here that is larger than negative 8 say negative 1 and the answer is yes because I still have this negative 5 so I'm gonna update this to negative 10 and I will be done so I had I have processed all movies but one so my answer will be n minus 1 which is equal to 4 so that's pretty much it let's check out the code now so this is my program and as we saw we needed to sort our arrays by earliest finishing time so I'm gonna define that compare function here so it is a function that returns a boolean and takes in the address of two pairs of ints so it can swap them if they are out of order and I will return the one with the earliest finishing time then back to my main function I will scan n and k then I will declare a vector of pair of ints so I can start the beginning and finishing time of my movies then I will read these values moving on I will sort my movies with my cmp function that I just defined then I will declare a set of pair of ints that we used in our example there and I will call it available then I will declare this uh, variable count that will keep track of the movies I want to be able to watch so for i equals 0 i less than n i plus plus I will check if my set is still empty in this case I will insert my first movie into it times negative 1 I will insert its uh, finishing time times negative 1 to be able to use the lower bound as we said along with its index to make them unique then uh, if that's not the case I have two other cases I will check for the lower bound of movies dot first times negative 1 and I will add the value negative 1 here too so it's biased toward finding a movie that is that has a larger beginning time so if t is different from the end of the set this means that there is uh, some guy who is done and who can watch this movie so I will erase its last task from the set and I will insert the finishing time of this new movie into it otherwise if there are no guys who can watch this movie but I still afford to hire new guys if the, the size of my set is less than k then I can just insert the finishing time times negative 1 again along with its index otherwise I won't be able to watch this movie so I'll just increment my count and at the end I'll just print n minus my count so that's pretty much it let's go ahead and submit so that worked thank you for watching and see you in the next video bye bye